Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this is my indoor compost, worm compost bin. And this is a protein bin. It is a experiment that I've been doing to try and debunk whether or not you should feed meat, food, like soup, etc., into a worm bin. This has been running for 11 months now and the experiment is coming to a close. So we are going to spend some time here as I'm working through the bin turning it over, assessing what's going on here, and uh, I'll tell you the story of the bin if you are not familiar. So this is about a 10 gallon bin, and it had started out with about one pound of my Red Wiggler Blue Worm European Nightcrawler mix, and basically I have been feeding them things like eggs and chicken, um, in particular, I've been cleaning out my cabinet of old canned food that's like five years old, like soup starter mix, which is what we fed last time. And we're just going to kind of churn through here as we are talking about the bin. Here's one of the chicken bones that I cut in half last time. And it looks like there's some pot worms inside, maybe. Maybe we should look closer at those under the microscope. I'll pull one out. So it looks like they're keeping the moisture really, you know, I haven't had a cover on this for a while because last time we were in here, it was getting pretty wet. So I had left the top off of it so that it could breathe a little bit. We had a bit of a, a hiatus from winter in that it was about 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit here. So I think that changes the humidity in the basement, being that it is a brick floor basement. It tends to fluctuate moisture and temperature with the outside, uh, with whatever the uh, weather outside is doing. So if we see you know, increased temperature, then the moisture tends to stay a little bit higher here. So as is normal for my bins, they usually go for about six months before I harvest them. And so this has actually been going a little bit longer than that because I wanted to test all sorts of different protein foods with them to make sure that they all worked so that I could, in fact, recommend that at the very least normal compost mix worms are capable with the help of their little friends, the springtails, mites, and isopods, can consume that material with no problem and still be, you know, healthy, healthy worms. So I want you to put in the comments below your opinions on what I'm about to say. So I think that it is because of the very healthy ecosystem in the worm bin that they're able to consume this rather odd kind of feeding. I think that um, the isopods and the mites and the springtails all play an integral role you know, in composting. And because this is an inside bin for me, and basically, I don't have to worry about, you know, my pets getting into it. I can do things a little bit differently and take some risks that some people wouldn't if their worm bins were normally in their house. So I think the ecosystem is why they've been so successful. And let's see what's going on here. I did put pureed food in last time and it was barley and beef I don't smell anything, but it is kind of wet over here. And I am seeing a lot of gnats and stuff. We put in a lot of bedding last time to try and mitigate the moisture. So I think that was a good call because it looks like that meat is creating quite a bit of, or the soup that I blended with water created quite a bit of moisture on that side. So we're gonna blend that back in. Now, I just want to say that I don't recommend first-time worm farmers just going out there and throwing a hamburger in their bins. I think that it's very important to have the ecosystem in place. And in the case of these worms and this bin, I took these worms from Blue, if you've watched the channel before, which is a 55-gallon bin, and I used some of the castings and the worms from an established bin that had all of the necessary bacteria and bin critters in there. And I think that is why this bin has been successful. I'm gonna continue churning that in because uh, this experiment has come to a conclusion. I believe that we have busted that myth. I think that a worm bin can take um, some meat products 
without any problems. Still got some of that stickiness here and there. I'm gonna try and blend that in with the leaves. As long as you have the right ecosystem. So I think that um, if it's a brand new bin, I wouldn't do it. However, if it is a bin that has an established ecosystem, I would say that, you know, I have been putting about one cup, two cups of food in this bin a month. In, in addition to the leaf bedding and the paper bedding that they've been given. Now, I'm trying to make this completely homogenous right now because this is the end of the experiment. I'm calling the myth busted. And I am going to let these worms forage, if you will, for the next couple of months. And at the end of that couple of months, I have got a quote to have salmonella as well as E. coli testing done on these castings. It is not going to be cheap. Um, I'll tell you that. So if you want to support the channel by using my Amazon links for anything that you use in your garden or your worm farm, that would help me pay for the probably $250 US that it's going to cost to get all of the testing done. Uh, I'm going to do it either way, but I just wanted to let you know that's what it costs to have a USDA recommended lab do the testing for salmonella and E. coli. So I think what we can do now that everything is mushed together is for this month I am going to basically do a foraging. I'm not going to try and migrate these worms. I am going to make sure that anything sticky is buried and I am going to cover this so that it can retain its moisture and then we're just going to let the worms work it out for another month or so uh, before I do the testing. So let me know your thoughts on this. Um, do you agree with me that it's the bin ecosystem that made this successful or do you think they would have been okay either way? I think that uh, promoting the ecosystem by not using neem like I did in the early days, um, I think allowing the bin ecosystem to be what it is has helped my bins cycle faster. Uh, like I said, those of you with more experience than me, please put you know, or any experience at all, put the comments below into what you consider to be acceptable and non-acceptable members of the ecosystem here. All right, guys. Well, if you liked this experiment, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.